Ducks are fascinating creatures. They live all over the world. Ducks are important for the environment. They help keep ecosystems in balance. Ducks eat insects, plants, and small fish. This helps to control populations. They also provide food for other animals. Predators like foxes and hawks rely on ducks. Ducks are a joy to watch. Their playful nature brings smiles to many faces. From their waddling walks to their graceful swims, ducks captivate us. Their presence enriches our planet. Let us learn more about these incredible birds. Understanding their life cycle helps us protect them. A duck's life begins inside an egg. This small, oval-shaped shell holds the promise of new life, a tiny world where the duckling starts its journey. The mother duck lays her eggs in a carefully chosen nest. She selects a safe and hidden spot, often near water, to ensure the best start for her offspring. The nest is usually made of soft materials like grass and down feathers. These materials provide warmth and cushioning, creating a cozy environment for the developing eggs. She keeps her eggs warm by sitting on them. The incubation period varies depending on the species but for most ducks, it takes about 28 days. During this time, the mother duck rarely leaves the nest ensuring the eggs are always at the right temperature. For most duck species it takes about a month for the eggs to hatch. This period is crucial as the embryos develop inside the eggs growing stronger each day. Inside the egg, the duckling grows. It starts as a tiny embryo and gradually develops its body parts, including its beak, wings and feet. The egg provides all the nutrients needed for this transformation. It develops its body parts and prepares for life outside. The duckling practices moving and stretching, getting ready for the big day when it will break free from its shell. When the time is right, the duckling hatches. This process, known as pipping, can take several hours as the duckling works tirelessly to break through the shell. It uses a small sharp tooth on its beak, called an egg tooth, to break free. This specialized tool is essential for the duckling to crack the hard shell. The egg tooth falls off shortly after hatching. Once its job is done, the egg tooth is no longer needed, and it naturally detaches from the beak. Newly hatched ducklings are covered in soft, downy feathers. These feathers are not yet waterproof but they provide some warmth and protection. They are wet and tired from the hatching process. The effort of breaking out of the shell leaves them exhausted, and they need time to rest and recover. The mother duck keeps them warm and dry under her wings. She provides the necessary warmth and comfort, ensuring her ducklings are safe and secure as they begin their new life outside the egg. Ducklings grow quickly. They need a lot of food and care. Mother ducks are very protective. They guide their ducklings to food sources. They also teach them how to avoid predators. As ducklings grow, they develop their adult feathers. These new feathers are stronger and more water resistant. They help the ducks to swim and stay warm. Ducklings also start to explore their surroundings. They learn to swim and forage for food. They practice their quacking and other vocalizations. By the time they are a few months old, ducklings are almost fully grown. They are ready to leave their mothers and start their own families. Ducklings need a special diet to help them grow. Protein is essential for their developing muscles and feathers. In the wild, ducklings eat a variety of foods. Insects are a favorite. They provide protein and other important nutrients. Small crustaceans, worms, and tadpoles are also on the menu. These provide essential vitamins and minerals. Plant matter is important too. Ducklings nibble on tender shoots, seeds, and grains. This helps with digestion and provides energy. Section 5. Adult Duck Diets. Adapting to the Seasons. Adult ducks are omnivores. They eat a variety of foods depending on what is available. Their diet changes with the seasons. In the spring and summer, ducks eat insects, worms, and other invertebrates. They also eat aquatic plants and seeds. These foods are plentiful during the warmer months. In the fall and winter, ducks rely more on plant matter. They eat seeds, grains, and berries. They may also eat small fish, amphibians, and crustaceans if they can catch them. Section 6. The World of Ducks. Exploring their natural habitats. Ducks are found on every continent except Antarctica. They live in a variety of wetlands, including ponds, lakes, rivers, marshes, and coastal areas. Wetlands provide ducks with the food and shelter they need to survive. These habitats are rich in insects, plants, and other aquatic life. Ducks need access to open water for swimming and foraging. They also need areas of vegetation for nesting and hiding from predators. 
Section 7. Duck Behavior Quacks, Waddles, and More Ducks are social animals. They live in flocks, which can range in size from a few individuals to hundreds of birds. These flocks are not just random gatherings, they are well-organized social structures where each duck has a role to play. Living in flocks offers protection from predators. When one duck senses danger it can alert the entire group, allowing them to take flight or dive into the water to escape. It also helps with finding food and mates. Ducks often forage together, which increases their chances of finding abundant food sources. Additionally, being in a flock makes it easier for ducks to find and select suitable mates during the breeding season. Ducks communicate with each other through a variety of vocalizations including quacks, whistles, and grunts. Each sound has a specific meaning and purpose from signaling alarm to expressing contentment. They use these sounds to attract mates, warn of danger, and keep the flock together. Communication is vital for maintaining the social structure and ensuring the survival of the group. One of the most distinctive behaviors of ducks is their waddling walk. This unique gait is not just a quirky characteristic, it plays a crucial role in their overall mobility. This is due to their legs being positioned on the sides of their bodies. This anatomical feature, while making them appear clumsy on land, is actually an adaptation that serves them well in their aquatic environment. While it may seem awkward, this adaptation helps them to be powerful swimmers. Their webbed feet act like paddles, allowing them to navigate through water with ease and grace. This dual capability of walking on land and swimming efficiently makes ducks versatile and resilient creatures. Section 8. The Importance of Feathers, Waterproofing and Beyond Feathers are essential for ducks. These features provide insulation, waterproofing, and camouflage. They also play an important role in courtship displays. Ducks have a special gland called the preen gland. It is located near the base of their tail. This gland produces oil that ducks spread over their feathers with their beaks. This oil helps to keep their feathers waterproof. This allows ducks to stay warm and dry even in cold water. Waterproofing is also crucial for buoyancy. Section 9. Ducks as Parents, Nesting and Raising Young Ducks are dedicated parents. They build nests and care for their young until they are old enough to fend for themselves. Most duck species breed once a year, usually in the spring. Female ducks typically lay between 5 and 12 eggs. The incubation period varies depending on the species. During this time the female does most of the incubating. Once the ducklings hatch both parents help to care for them. They protect their young from predators and teach them how to find food and swim. Section 10. Threats to Ducks, Protecting Our Feathered Friends Ducks face a number of threats, many of which are caused by humans. Habitat loss is a major concern. Wetlands are drained for development, agriculture, and other purposes. Pollution from pesticides, herbicides, and industrial waste can contaminate waterways. This can harm ducks and their food sources. Climate change is also a growing threat. Rising sea levels are shrinking coastal habitats. Hunting and trapping can impact duck populations. It is important to practice responsible hunting practices. We must follow regulations to ensure sustainable populations. Section 11. Conservation Efforts – Our Role in Their Future We can all play a role in protecting ducks and their habitats. From the smallest actions to the largest initiatives, every effort counts. Whether it's participating in local cleanup events or simply being mindful of our daily habits, we can contribute to a healthier environment for ducks and other wildlife. Supporting organizations involved in wetland conservation is crucial. These groups dedicate their time and resources to preserving these essential ecosystems. By volunteering, donating or even spreading the word about their work, we can amplify their impact and help ensure that wetlands remain vibrant and thriving. These groups work tirelessly to protect and restore these vital ecosystems. Their efforts include monitoring duck populations, restoring native vegetation, and creating safe havens for wildlife. Their work is a testament to the power of collective action and the difference it can make. Reducing our carbon footprint helps mitigate climate change. By using less energy, driving less, and supporting sustainable practices, we can lessen our impact on the environment. Simple changes like biking instead of driving or installing solar panels can have a significant effect on the health of our planet. We can make a difference by adopting sustainable practices in our daily lives. From using eco-friendly products to participating in community initiatives, every action helps. Together we can create a more sustainable future for ourselves and the wildlife that shares our world.
educating ourselves and others about the importance of ducks and their conservation is essential. Knowledge is power, and by learning about the challenges ducks face and the ways we can help, we can inspire others to take action. Education can start at home, in schools, or through community programs. We can raise awareness about the threats they face. Social media campaigns, community meetings, and educational programs are all effective ways to spread the message. By engaging with our communities and sharing information, we can build a network of informed and motivated individuals ready to make a difference. By taking action, we can help ensure that these fascinating creatures continue to grace our waterways for generations to come. Our efforts today will shape the future of our environment, creating a legacy of conservation and stewardship that will benefit both wildlife and humanity.